So appreciate the conference organizers let us uh, get up here. I uh, have a little bit of a, uh, you know, stayed out a little too late, a little bit too much damp air. There may or may not have been, you know, other things involved, but uh, bear with me if I uh, <coughs> get through this presentation. So anyway, my name is Jason Tomlinson. I'm the CEO of Coin Alpha. Coin Alpha is a company that created Hummingbot, open sourced it in 2018, and then split it into a separate DAO in, uh, there we go, uh, and then set it into a separate DAO in 2021. So a uh, quick intro about how the two uh, companies uh, work together, and then we're going to talk a little bit about liquidity and why liquidity is important. One of the things that we really notice, because we deal with tons of layer ones, we deal with centralized exchanges, we deal with liquidity all over a digital ecosystem, is where are the transactions on Polkadot? I mean, you know, why are there not more transactions? Why, why are more people not here? And I'm not talking about just like trading. I'm talking about actually just, you have to have liquidity in order to power these ecosystems. So I'm gonna talk about that and then I'm gonna give an example of how we're working with Polkadex, a parachain, uh, to actually solve this problem for them. So the foundation is, uh, it's a DAO, uh, has 11 team members, and basically anyone, if you're a developer, you can contribute code base and, uh, into the Hummingbot code base and earn HBOT tokens. Coin Alpha is a, uh, we're a for-profit fintech solution company, uh, and we generate revenues by selling solutions on top of the Hummingbot code base. So we work with a lot of layer one protocols, and now we're also working with uh, um, several pair chains in the Polkadot ecosystem. So the competition for liquidity, you're seeing a lot of this, particularly after say November, December of last year, liquidity just went away. And so that's a problem, no matter if you're trying to trade NFTs or you're trying to trade tokens, market makers are pulling back. Uh, retail is hard to find. So, and at the same time, if liquidity is, is, is getting scarce, you're constantly launching more tokens, more protocols, more layer ones, more layer twos. I mean, it's just, you know, real world assets. So who and where is this liquidity gonna come from? I don't have the answer for that. What I'm gonna talk about first is like why it's important that you solve for it. Number one, liquidity is essential for efficient markets. Uh, anyone who's ever tried to do a trade on Uniswap for a really illiquid token and experienced, you know, 20, 30% slippage on the price realize that's not an efficient market. Um, if you have good liquidity, then you actually invite market participants with different needs. So you may be a small trader that uh, really just likes to collect some uh, NFT collection. Uh, that's one need. You might be a large trader looking to do $10 million trades at a time and capturing five bips each trade. Um, a very liquid and efficient market attracts that. Uh, we've already talked about slippage. Um, I think the, that fourth point there is really important that a lot of people misunderstand. You lower risk for market participants. So if you have an asset, regardless of what it is, and it's trading on chain, if there is no liquidity for that asset and you read a tweet about it or someone tells you about it and you go to buy it, you think, great, I want to buy this, but ooh, what if I change my mind? Will I be able to sell it? If there is no liquidity, you will not be able to sell it or you'll experience huge loss. So good liquidity reduces the risk for market participants. And this is what we're solving for here. Liquidity rarely occurs organically in new markets. So if you're launching a new DAP, you're launching a new NFT collection, you're launching anything really, uh, you're going to have to plan for liquidity. It's not just going to magically show up. Uh, and it, honestly, this is not a very exciting world. Uh, liquidity is what I call like the plumbing of these markets. It's necessary. We, we all appreciate their plumbing in this building, but we really don't think about it a lot and nobody really wants to you know, <laughs> address it. But it is something that is, is, uh, is needed. So the three points here uh, about how to attract liquidity. Number one, uh, and I'll, I'll go through these, we'll talk more about um, uh, a use case with Pokedex at the end. Uh, number one, you can incentivize market participants. Um, number two, and this is important, you need to remove the barriers um, by building multiple connection points, building multiple interfaces. Don't get stuck in the idea that, okay, I'm just gonna do it the way I wanna do it, and I don't care what the rest of the world, how they interface. If you do that, you're isolating that liquidity, and they're, not, they're lazy, they're not gonna come to your way of doing things. That's why standards are important. 
And then for new platforms, you need to be prepared to bootstrap your own liquidity. Once again, it's like if you build it, they will come. This does not apply to digital assets. Like, yeah, if you raise a $50 million round, you got a bunch of VCs and you, and you partner with somebody that's going to blast it out over to 100 million Twitter followers, yeah, you can, you know, liquidity will show up. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying it doesn't happen for 99% of the projects. So you need to plan for it. So the first point, this one's fairly easy to understand because we've all seen it. How, okay, I launched something new. I want to incentivize people. Um, trading competitions on centralized exchanges. Uh, Coin Alpha, we, we help uh, tokens get listed on all the big centralized exchanges and they, all, they always require you know, a, a marketing budget to do a trading competition to give away tokens. All right, that's one thing. Uniswap, what does Uniswap do? You stake, if you take a position, you earn a position, a portion of the fees. So I'm rewarding you for bringing liquidity. Uh, if you guys have ever traded DYDX, you know, you actually get rewarded for trading. Uh, there's a proposal out there now to actually increase the reward for being a market maker, for actually providing liquidity on DYDX. Uh, and then injective protocol is a little bit, this project is a little bit newer, but basically they've allocated a, a ton of injective tokens for people that will come and put liquidity. So the cons to this approach is it can be very expensive. You can end up be, you, that's the DYDX, now that DYDX is, is established, they're reducing the number of tokens they're emitting or they want to reduce because it gets expensive. And the other thing that I hate about every, a lot of traders is they pop from promo to promo to promo to promo. So that liquidity is not sticky. So you can launch something new and say, I'm gonna give away 10% of my token supply in the first you know, 30 days, and on day 31, boom, all that liquidity is gone because it wasn't sticky. Removing barriers to entry, uh, we do mostly B2B stuff, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into UI, UX stuff for retail. The only one point I have here that I think is solid is if you're building something new, don't go too new. Don't go too far from what users are already accustomed to experiencing. Um, you may have built a better mousetrap, but if it's intimidating, they're not gonna engage. Uh, and then for pro users and institutions, and this is a lot of the liquidity that people really want to attract, um, you need to meet them where they are. Like if, and, and we'll give this example of how Pokedex is doing that uh, later. Um, and then obviously I'm, I'm biased against open source, so I think participating in open source projects uh, uh, is a great way uh, to remove barrier to entry because you're providing code that people can reuse uh, for uh, their use. So a little bit about Hummingbot. So Hummingbot is the open source market making bot and arbitrage. It is expanding. Uh, it, it used to be mostly focused on market making and arbitrage. Now it has directional strategies. Once again, I'm from the for-profit side on Coin Alpha. Uh, the, the business model is very similar to like a Red Hat Linux. So if you want Linux, you can go download it for free. If you want software and services and support on top of Linux, then maybe you want to call somebody at Red Hat. So I'm on the Coin Alpha side, but I'm talking here about the open source side. Uh, so basically it's a, a series of connectors into all these different digital assets. Uh, there's over 30 centralized exchange connectors. We're integrated to 10 different chains and a bunch of DEXs. Uh, the great thing about Hummingbot is it's all client side. So it's different than like a crypto hopper or three commas. You don't upload your keys anywhere. Uh, you download and run this. It's all client side software. Uh, it is command line and old school. So if uh, that's the, uh, the screenshot there in the top right with some ASCII art there for you. So uh, the reason it's called Hummingbot is it is small, lightweight, and fast. Uh, and so you can run like eight of these bots on one little Raspberry Pi. Uh, so the idea is to have one bot doing one strategy and then just do a bunch of them. Uh, and so uh, anyway, it is, it's forked a lot. We have a lot of co-contributors and it really has, uh, it's kind of moved more from a trader community into a developer community and they're really doing some cool things. One of the things that's interesting is, um, you know, in a given week, typically more volume flows through Hummingbot than flows through all of Uniswap. So a lot of people are surprised to hear that. The reason is that you can, uh, back on the previous chart, you saw the number of forks, a lot of our friends, partners, or whatever are TradFi, crypto hedge funds, family offices. They fork the code base and use it. 
that volume gets reported back to us in an anonymous way. Uh, and so, and then you get, you know, it basically allows anybody to be a market maker. It's that whole idea of democratizing market making. So that's really the advantage of Hummingbot. Um, so my third point, and this is what I really wanted to talk about in relation to Pokedex, is, and I actually typoed that, it was supposed to be bootstrap liquidity, but I think I'm gonna like, maybe trademark that word. I don't know, bootstrap, it kinda had, you know, I don't know, maybe, it could, maybe I'll start a new, pro, new project called bootstrap. Because it is, the idea of bootstrapping is of course that you're trying to boost something from the beginning. Um, we have seen a dramatic pullback by traditional market makers to fund projects or participate. Uh, a lot of this, you know, was the 2022 washout. You just, it's harder to find. It's harder to find somebody to bring capital. So if you're doing a project, you need to plan on doing it for yourself in most cases. The good news is you don't have to have a lot. And I just showed you a tool that lets you do it for yourself for free. So you don't have to go give up 5% of your token supply. You don't have to pay somebody a bunch of money. You can do it for yourself. Or you also can pay Coin Alpha and their affiliated companies to do it if you wanted to. So the case study I wanted to talk about is Pokedex. So we've known the Pokedex team for a couple of years now and um, uh, really like them. And they, they're about to launch um, their order book V2. So we're seeing a ton of Clobdexes pop up all over. And um, so uh, Coin Al one of Coin Alpha's affiliate entities uh, actually populates the books for them. So we built the connector in the Hummingbot format to the Pokedex parachain and support trading on the Pokedex exchange. And then they actually bootstrap the liquidity and run bots to actually make that market attractive, all right? And so they didn't have to give up a ton of their token supply. They didn't have to do a token loan. They didn't have to pay a bunch of money to a market maker. And then guess what? That connector to Pokedex is now in the Hummingbot open source code base. And as soon as their order book V2 launches, I guarantee you they'll see transaction to what was referenced is looking for arbitrage. Because I guarantee you as soon as they list a dot .USDT pair on a new DEX on Polkadot, that price is gonna move slower than Binance. And that creates arbitrage and that brings transactions. So um, this is uh, kind of the, what we call like how there's a liquidity solution for anyone in our ecosystem. Um, if you wanna do it yourself, if you wanna do it yourself, like if I'm, at a party and somebody says, yeah, me and my friend, we just started a token and we need a market maker. You know, I was like, well, have you raised any money yet? And no, my mom gave me 50 bucks. You know, it's like, all right, well, go to the open source, watch some videos. They have a bot camp you can take that teaches you how to be the market maker, do that. Someone else comes up and says, hey, we just closed the seed round of 25 million. I'll be like, hey, come talk to me, right? <laughs> so there's, there's different ways. And, and that's what this really represents. And we fit in the middle. So when I talk about the brand name market makers, these are the GSRs and Winter Mutes and Ambers. And, and there's a lot, I know a lot of these folks are all good people, but they operate under a slightly different model. Um, and most of them do. Market making a service is still a fairly new concept. Uh, but it's something that Coin Alpha and Hummingbot have been doing from the beginning. And so basically, if you're a large token and you have a big VC and you can hire a brand name market maker with some kind of token loan or option, do it. But if you're in the middle, which is where most people fit, then you can either uh, come to Coin Alpha and we can help you out, or you can do it yourself by do it yourself market making using uh, the, the Hummingbot software. That's it for me. There's my telegram if anybody wants to connect or talk. Um, and once again, thanks for having us and thanks for listening. Why do I have Jason? I said Jeff. Yeah, sorry about that. It, you ever like create a telegram handle and then like it ends up being your business handle and everyone knows you by that, so you hate to go try and change it. So You created a handle with just some random name, Jack? No, those are my two favorite dogs I've ever had, oh, Jack okay. and Shiloh. Oh, that's pretty sentimental. Yeah, okay. so I, I, it'd, be, it'd be very hard to abandon okay, it. Okay, no, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, so. I, was just <laughs> I was just making sure I didn't get your name wrong, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, no okay. I appreciate that. Thank cool, you. well, thanks so much. Love what you guys are doing there at Hummingbot, man.